Church Street Force Main. Uh, a number of you do have uh, in your packets or uh, memo that um, Jennifer prepared and uh, we issued on Saturday. Um, this is an ongoing um, process. There's no, um, I want to say minute by minute, uh, hour by hour, the numbers change, uh, inf more information is coming in, et cetera, et cetera. To bring you up to speed, what happened? Um, this past Tuesday, yeah, thank you, because I want to keep saying Monday. But Tuesday, we were doing, uh, we're following our standard operating procedures that we agreed upon with the state. We had, um, we were testing, pressure testing the ductile iron force main. This is the same one that broke two years ago mm -hmm. this, and was fixed this month two years ago. Um, it would not hold pressure. We continued from like 2 o'clock in the afternoon till about 4 o'clock in the afternoon trying to get the thing to hold pressure. Uh, my staff kept me up to date that it wouldn't hold, um, but we didn't know whether it was debris stuck under one of the gates or if it was in fact broken. Uh, Wednesday morning they came in, we put a much larger compressor on it, uh, bringing the pressure, let's say, from 5 pounds to 10 or 12 pounds. Yeah. Uh, they walked uh, the side of the line closest to the plant, then went to the Church Street location and started walking the, the path of the line. That's when they noticed that, in fact, it was broken. Um, we had air being forced up through the um, effluent right up to the surface of the marsh. Um, they radioed. Uh, others that were on, on the dry side of the world to uh, shut the pumps off. Um, it's in fact broken. Uh, how it's broken, we don't know. We don't know if a piece is missing out of it, if a joint has separated, if it's a similar type of failure to what occurred two years ago. We, we, we still don't know and won't know until we got, get out there and excavate it. Um, the real, um, and I, let me, before I get into the process, um, We've been regularly checking the flow of uh, the tidal waters under Tide Mill Creek. It has not exceeded, uh, the limit is 100 uh, fecal count, and it has never exceeded 100 fecal count. Got up to, I believe, 87, yeah, 87.8 on one test, but that's, uh, and that was in the area directly adjacent to the failure. Out at uh, Tide Mill Creek, it's been one part per MPN and 11 MPN. It's, that stands for mm -hmm. micro, whatever. Um, the point is, uh, there's been no environmental damage. Uh, the clam flats are open. Uh, Chris Nash with the uh, Shellfish Bureau has been doing his own test testing. Uh, there is no, um, if you will, uh, big area or effect. The reason why is this particular failure area is totally surrounded by marsh grass. The previous one, it was in an area where if the effluent did rise up in it, it quickly had a path to a minor tributary that would then go to a creek, which then went to Tide Mill Creek. Uh -huh. This is a totally different location. Um, it's a, probably a 1,000 feet different from the location that we were before. It's only about 300 feet um, out away from the Church Street parking lot, as shown by um, the sketches that Jennifer put together, and I'll call your attention to that one. So, what is the process? Obviously, we want, we want to get out there and fix it. Irregardless of whatever subsequent moves we take, we do need to fix that force main now. Um, the reason being is it, it's apparent to us that even if we were to, let's say, vice. We, we went to move to find the money to get it done in, in 2018 somehow, some way, you'd still need this pipe repaired so that we can go back online so that the beach can open so that um, we can proceed with business as normal. So then, it, and, and that's what we're, we're actively working on. We have a cost out with Sever, uh, a cost out request from Severino Construction. And we also have a cost request in we're waiting for from it's called the maybe Matt company it's a guy's last name M-A-Y M-A-B-E-Y M-A-B-E-Y and it was English um, so 
because it's much shorter uh, you know, in the road path to get out there and because we also own the pipe. Uh, when it occurred three years ago, Severino had the wisdom to buy or to order and get Thank delivered you. to the site three pieces of pipe. Huh? We only used one of them. We still have two pieces of pipe there. So we have the pipe. Um, we may have to buy a few fittings. But again, the biggest cost to get out there will be, uh, or to fix it, will be actually getting ourselves out there to do it. Uh, when we do have it open, um, this time I do plan on uh, doing some cleaning and, um, and some video inspection. I want to see what's going on in, in the direct, as far as we can get down either side uh, with the camera. Um, two years ago, that was not really possible because the pipe was so chucker block full of waste and um, we'd have been out there for a week trying to clear it just to get a, a view um, but the pipe the remainder of the pipe that was out there two years ago was intact it had no other deficiencies to it so the decision was made then to if you will make the repair secure it pressure test it and get out of the marsh before the next big tide cycle but this time we're going to approach it slightly different uh, partially because um, I'm seeing a different type of failure response around the, the pipe. There's a lot of beach sand. Um, if you look at this photo here, the bottom one, that's beach sand in a 360-degree mm -hmm. peripheral around that pipe. Um, what that lends itself to is that the high flows that we experienced on uh, March 2nd and 3rd when we had the uh, nor'easter. Uh, tide comes in that heavy, we get one and a half to two million gallons of seawater through there. Well, when we did, um, obviously it pushed a little bit of beach sand too. So where that's coming from, that's what I'm going to be looking for. And um, for those that are probably not aware, that amount of beach sand in the effluent acts as an abrasive to the pipe, to any pipe. We've lost a number of pipes interior to the wastewater treatment plant because they've actually been eroded from the inside out because it's literally been sandblasted and we've had pipes that we've taken apart and it, they've been paper thin. So I'm not saying that that's the actual cause, but it does, that sand there gives me Something to look for something, when we're out Something there. else to look for. Something else that has to be vetted. I've also talked with the state. They'd like to come down when we do make the repair. They'd like to see the pipe for themselves. Told them not an issue. We'd, uh, we'd invite them down. Uh, beyond that, we then, it would be um, after the repair, then there has to be a discussion of where, where do we stand with this? How do we... Um, continue to or how do we prepare ourselves ultimately for this the pipe has to be replaced um, I know you're aware of it that's why we spent the money to have the engineering done and the plans put together that's why we finally have all the permits um, it was even in the last month that we were where am I thinking that you're thinking the dam but I'm thinking of the we do we water. have our wetland yeah. permits and our Army Corps permits right. uh, Which, the last piece of this that I mentioned in the memo is there still a DOT, a DOT component, uh, the use and occupancy agreement uh, that would need to happen. But uh, the other two permits are still in effect and have not expired. Right. So that's where we stand. Questions from the board? Yeah, what approximate cost of getting out there? I know last time it- Last time it was 130, I'd say 100,000. 100,000 to get yeah. out there. One of the big things that Although it's a much shorter distance, if you're looking at the plan that has the yellow, um, that yellow line is actually drawn over, you can see in the aerial where the mats were. So that's the exact path it took last time uh, to get out there. The machines can't turn 90 degrees on these mats. So everything sort of has to be angled as you're moving. So we'll need to set up a perimeter of mats and maybe work towards shore or towards the Church Street pump station instead of uh, towards the wastewater treatment plant like we did last time. So I'll be it that the distance out there is only a third of the way and one bridge less. 
It's still one bridge that's going to take four spans uh, to get over it. And then we're going to need this 60 by 60 landing at the other side in order to turn around the excavator. So, so we're talking 100 something thousand. Your number, your number's in there. I mean, from some of the preliminary yeah. stuff to we've gotten to, back. To totally repair it, we're talking 150. Yeah, because we have the pipe. There's some fittings I need to buy. 100, in and around 100. No, 100 to get out there. And then you got to repair. Well, well he last said time, all together. Okay, the I last time, heard. the hundred and thirty thousand we spent, <clears throat> yeah, was one hundred and twenty to arrive there. Yeah, it was nine thousand nine hundred and thirty-eight dollars to make the repair. Okay, so the repair is inexpensive in comparison to preparing to arrive to the job. Okay. And due to the the age of the pipe, if it's an older pipe, there would be less it would take less abrasion to make a hole than it would in a new pipe. Yeah. Sure. So but yeah, it's things you know. It's like it's like potholes working on shocks of a car. If they've got a hundred thousand miles on them, a standard pothole can probably take out a shock. Brand new car, the new shock can probably handle it. Um, but beyond that, we're speculating. And contaminants being released now? Any? None. The, the pipe is shut down. Um, we are going to have. I think it's tomorrow or. Wednesday. 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 Um, we're going to go in on the Church Street side and we're going to vacuum out the remaining effluent in the pipe so that um, it doesn't, as tides come in and come go out, they don't pick up additional waste and carry it with them. Plus, we're going to need it out, out of there anyhow if we're going to work there. And the, the tide cycle right now is, is good for you or bad? So April 6th to April 14th is the best window to do these repairs. Uh, that gives us tides that are 8-4 and lower uh, in that cycle. After that, we start getting higher, and that's about the tide cycle we were in last time with the repairs, and we don't want to go any higher than that. Okay, thank you. Sure. Regina? So two weeks, you've been testing this pipe two weeks ever since. Right. The last time this pipe was tested was actually February 28th. And the pressure was fine. And the pressure was then. fine then. And then we had the big storm. Yep. And then you tested it after that, and then you instantaneously knew that the pressure was not right. It was not holding, right. Okay. And we took lots of excess water over those few yeah, days well, of that storm. Yeah, the pump station handle had a lot of excess water coming in, and, and it was pushed over to the plant through both pipes. What effect that, as I say, when, it, when we see the kind of defect that we have, the kind of break that we have, failure, right. we'll know more as to cause and effect. Okay. And then you can see whether or not maybe it's just because it's old and there was, or there was something wedged against it or it was because of all the sand and water. Could have been because of all the sand and the water. We, uh, we well, were not reluctant right. last week when uh, Friday, we went around with FEMA. I think they sent in eight or nine people. We were out, went around town, and that was one of the things that we floated to them <laughs> that we did. We have this documented failure right after a, a major storm event, two major storm events. And that pipe's been monitored for pretty much two years. Yes, and it, and and it was in w good working condition, held pressure on the 28th of February. All right, great. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> yes, I think it's important to remember that this is the newer of the old pipes. Right. And I think that anything we're doing right now is just speculation because we really don't know what's happening. Right. And I, I think that's different than what's been reported in the newspaper. They make it sound like it's the same as last time. It definitely isn't. Um, I think that... Um, you know, as far as we see that the sand is there, I would like to definitely... Um, I feel we have to find where that sand is coming from mm -hmm. and if the state has any responsibility. If it's coming from Ocean Boulevard, uh, you know, we need to, uh, to realize this. And, you know, I, their drain system there, we don't really, as far as I'm, I know, we don't know a lot about it. I mean, some of it drains directly onto the beach. Some of it drains directly into the water because I can stand there and see the um, pipes, um, the water coming into the manholes. I've stood there and watched mm -hmm. it when the waves go. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is something that we have to really look. I think it's, 
um, that we need to take a look to see what FEMA did down in New Jersey when they had pipes that were affected by sand mm -hmm. and mud and stuff like that that came. And did they pay? pay? Did the government, the federal government, um, give some money here? Um, I feel that, um, you know, this, it's going to be good that we see that there is something totally different happening this time, and this needs to help us make the decision that we're going to make. Okay. It may be something that's very easy to fix. We don't really know. Correct. And I think it's a godsend that the sand's coming out there because that shows us that it's definitely something completely different than what was happening the last time. And I know the last time I thought, um, really, it was a lot, great deal of work and um, safety was achieved with that $130,000, and I'm glad to hear that it's going to be less than that this time. Um, and I think it's going to be easier for you because you've been to the rodeo before. Um, and it's going to be, I think we have to keep an open mind and see exactly what this is. We have a lot to learn here. We and do. I'm glad that um, you're going to have this experience and you'll be able to lead us the right way. <coughs> He's just been waiting for this experience, I'm sure. I don't know, you got to ask Christy if she dreams in numbers. I have nightmares in force means. <laughs> okay, folks. The last breach looked like a, not a round hole. Mm -hmm. It looked like it had been rubbed on, chewed on, something or other. This looks to me like sand has been blasted up from water pressure. It doesn't look to me like it's sand that was in the pipe. The sand is under all the pipes out there. You're well, in the marsh. No. No. This, the pipe out there is actually when they take out the marsh muck, I call it, because it's not really soil and it's not really loam. They laid in a cloth and they bedded it in stone, three-quarter inch processed crushed stone. Okay. And then they lay the pipe in that. So there is no beach sand directly around this pipe. But, or in the marsh. Or, or directly in the marsh. Way but we do get yeah, beach sand mm -hmm. through our system and into the plant because, um, well, we always attribute it to people, you know, taking showers after spending the day at the beach. Yeah. Um, I know four to five years ago we had in Ted Berry Company, and they jet after right after we built the Church Street pump station, they cleaned the Brown Ave force main when they did. Yeah because they used a lot higher velocity, um, they pushed all that sand, what they didn't vacuum out, pushed it right into the bottom of the Church Street pump station, and we, and we p had to remove it from there. Oh. So part of what I, the reason why I think this is storm related is, when you've got that strong of a tide come in, you increase the velocity, you've got some infiltration to the sewer system, separate from the drainage system, it increased the velocity through those lines. You basically scoured them, pushed that material into the pump station, and the pump station continued to push it across the marsh. And, and that's where I think a majority of that sand comes from. So it was partially related to the high volume of water we had the flooding. And that's why I think it's storm event related. Chris, the last time the pipe went you cut the section out we could see it you put pictures there yep. um what does the pipe look like now have you actually had a chance to see it we have not you haven't seen <clears throat> if it looks similar to what the first one was oh no you can't tell how long is the pipeline how long is that ductile pipe well it's from the pump station to the wastewater retrieval plant it's four thousand feet long okay and that's what 20 foot segments of yes. pipe okay now um, when do you have the report when that line was was actually placed in the marsh do you have uh, reports on hand that show how that was done and the reason I'm asking that is that it was proposed or assumed with the first break, with the hole, that the line was rubbing on a rock mm -hmm. that had been placed there mm -hmm. 
to stabilize the line or whatever? When Can you lay you... a full length of pipe like that, we normally, in, in the sewer business, they'll hold up the, the forward edge of the pipe and part for two reasons. One, they come in by hand and we call it chinking. You literally force the stone underneath the bed of the pipe. Mm -hmm. you, you want it to be supported. Mm -hmm. You don't want the pipe to have to flex. Yeah. Before they actually did that, this, pla this pipe is actually has a plastic liner around it, uh, a rather big sleeve. Well, the only way humanly possible to pull that sleeve down the pipe is you've got to be supporting this end of it. Well, the rock that I have in, in, the, in the hole that, again, was in the paper the other day, yeah. they're, they're like left and right hands. They match. So, it, it, so it's obvious to me that somebody wedged in a stone and held that pipe up while they were pulling down the plastic liner mm -hmm. and then chinking the stone in and just literally forgot to take the stone out. But you can't see the rest of the pipe. No. Because if... I'd have to investigate every... Well... What I'm getting at is if the... Uh, if that's not unique, if somebody used stones at all the bell joints for the 4,000 feet, because mm -hmm. you've got 20-foot ductile iron pipe, if you've got that underneath the bell joints all along, then we have a bigger problem with who installed that line. And I don't know if there's an inspection report or if there are any pictures from when the line was actually being put in, because I'm wondering if we could have possibly some type of... Um, we I found no Recourse. photos. Hmm? We found no photos from. We found no photos. So we you're found, you're running blind right now. No inspection reports. Okay. Um, it's almost. We know who did the inspection. Mm -hmm. um, we have nothing documenting that. It's, it's so what you're going to be looking at now is to see if it was the practice of whoever installed it. I don't remember who did it. Right. To see if you have stones at the bell joints for the pipe all the way through. Well, it's a possibility. You haven't been down there yet. Isn't it a different type of pipe? No, it's, it's the same pipe. It's the same asbestos concrete pipe? No, no it's no, ductile it's a line. ductile it's line. The same yeah. ductile line. And that's supposed to be a good pipe. You know, I'm just speculating. This, I carried the stone from where we found it back <laughs> into the yard. Yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to carry that stone on a daily basis from pipe section to pipe section. I'm, I'm a little too smart for that. No, I so mean, I think I would have had a piece of wood or something that I would have used more frequently. So I don't, still don't know where the... You don't think they deposited the stones at all the bell joints to no, stabilize? No. If, well, you going to find they did, out? <laughs> wow, that would be catastrophic yeah. if they did stones always work up from the ground too besides. only only with frost action and this mm. marsh never freezes yeah. there's no way it's that not. stone could have risen right. if you will like frost action in a, in a, in a New England field because the frost doesn't go that deep it, it can't physically lift it mm. the stone is heavier denser than the marsh right. muck it's in if anything it would settle out to the Let's bottom see. I just want to ask one thing. You know, one thing that I wanted before I lost train of my thought here is that I want to make sure that um, if there is a replacement done here, that this same sand wouldn't affect a newer replacement. I mean, is there a way to stop that sand from getting in there, whether it's a new pipe or an old pipe? If we probably complete the all the sewer line replacement in the beach district, get rid of all the clay pipe that was there, mm -hmm. um, and do some other minor things to like seal up some of the manholes, we could probably cut down on a good portion of the sand. Mm -hmm. But uh, we still have remaining work to do in that, in, mm -hmm. over in the beach area. How much of that drainage is still left? Because we did do some work down there. I wanna say 40%. There's still as much as 40%. Yeah. Thank you. Several million dollars worth of Regina. pipe. 
that has to be replaced. Just one thing, Mr. Chairman. So we're sort of at a standstill right now until we can actually figure out what is why the pipe is broken. Right. I mean, we're yeah. We're, what we're telling you is that we're going to vet these prices, bring them forward, ask you to, you know, I'll I'll tell you what part of my budget I'm what project I'm not going to do and how I'll pay for this and ask you to uh, support contracts to get this repaired and hopefully within our April time window. And then once we see that. Well, we um, have to have this discussion of. Right. Was right. it the same? Was it different? Was it something else? Well, something right. that's the same to me is that we don't know if there's anything wrong with these pipes until they don't work anymore. So I think that's something that we need to consider once we, obviously we need to fix the pipe for the summertime. Right. It's going to be June pretty soon. But, so whatever we need to do to get that done, but after that, I think we need to consider future-wise what we're going to do because the, actually, like Rick said, the other pipe that hasn't even had an issue is actually the old one right? by like 20 years. And they've both been sitting under saltwater marsh and the storms are getting worse every year and yeah. so. I yeah, think the other pipe is 60 years, 61 years old and this one's 31 years old. Yeah, it's a changing Rusty. environment. Rusty, I had one more. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, um, will you be taking pictures again as oh, you're yeah. excavating? You will have a series because to document. There's a ton of photos from the first time. There'll be Excellent. another ton from this time. Excellent. And it is, just to make sure it's clear, it is the same pipe. It's the same one that we're it's having exactly the, pro the same problem pipe. with. Yeah. That's right. And we have not heard you back yet from DEFs. DES has uh, called to offer whatever assistance they can give us. This would take an emergency authorization, uh, very similar to what we did last time, which is the permit um, that you fill out in the beginning. They authorize it. You tell them the means and the methods of what you're going to do thing, and then we're required to fill uh, to file a full dredge and fill permit afterwards. Okay. And you're referring to the wetlands wetlands permit. permit. I've spoken with uh, the head of uh, Environmental Services Water Division. Um, they're their feeling is the same, pretty much the same as yours. They're not willing to rush to judgment till we see what mm -hmm. this particular defect or failure is, and what caused it. Um, I did invite them down, you know, to see how we do what we do, where it's located. Um, they said more than likely this time they're going to take us up on that, come down and see it. Um, I know, Rusty, the last time you were able to walk, walk out there. Um, the mats are very stable. I wouldn't. We'll let you know when we're going, and if you all want to come out there, and if you're uncomfortable, we can put you in a car and and and, and literally drive right out there. So it is. It's a. Uh, it's pretty amazing to put see that heavy of equipment on the marsh, and yeah. it's still scary. The reason why we take so many pictures is we had cameras. If Jennifer fell through, we had a bet the first time. <laughs> she didn't fall through, so we didn't have to pay out the bet. But that's we do take a ton of pictures, especially it's, if it's that happens. Experience, it's learning. Yeah. So the biggest thing is get the pipe fixed. Yeah, we got to move. See forward. what what caused it, and then go from there. Go from there, right? At least it took your mind off the snow. <laughs> this is not the kind of thing <laughs> I wanted to take my mind off the snow. Anything else? Uh, Any other good news? Where are we? Oops. I took truck 30 off the road today because it's going to cost 30% of the truck's value, original value, to fix it, so it's not worth it. We have a leak, water leak in the water plant, or uh, from the between the water plant between the wastewater plant and our offices. So every night we shut the water off, so we don't lose more water. Um, you said good news. Oh, is, did he say good yes, he did. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so things are situation normal, and uh, we're managing every day, and it's, it's working fine. No, everybody's, uh, the employees are uh, pleased that, uh, I want to say thank you to the taxpayers that voted for the employee contracts, all of them, police, fire, and, and, and our public works people. Um, they truly appreciate it. Um, things are normal. We're literally getting ready for summer. Uh, trash cans, uh, take, uh, put beach sand back where it needs to go, those sort of things. So, no, we're in a definitely a spring mindset within the, the just, department. Just to be clear, we found this leak. Nobody else found it. Correct. <laughs> we're, we're maintaining that we're going to correct it. So. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah, it did, didn't occur the other way around. Real quickly, and I spent a little time with Chris last week, and I'm very grateful for that. I'm wondering if we as a board can consider getting together sometime in the reasonably near future to start talking about the trash, the waste, the collections, see if we can bring in beach business owners, uh, see if we can have a little round table to start figuring out uh, where we can go uh, so Fred doesn't sit there every Monday night and say we're getting nothing done, all we do is pick up trash. Uh, so I'm hoping that we can have a little round table or, or a discussion uh, for that. And then We're available at the board's discussion. And then your staffing. You still got 12 to go. It's going to be a hard market to try to find people who want to do the jobs. We, we hired uh, two people that started within the last uh, week and a half. Excellent. Okay. Um, a third one never responded to his right. job offer letter. Right. Um, we have other uh, applicants that we're moving on to. So. But you're getting some oh, yeah. recourse for your staffing. Job market is changing in that some yeah. people are coming to realize that the town does towns do offer good benefits. The health benefit is a is a valuable asset. Mm -hmm. The uh, retirement um, people that you know have longer term uh, thinking or thinking about doing things longer term, and therefore we are we're attracting some quality people. But what you do is hard work, and yeah, and, and we we tell them good. Everybody's a laborer, and that's. That's nice to hear that you uh, respect the fact that the taxpayers do vote for the insurance and the benefits yes. that all of the employees get. We, we totally, yeah. everyone I think yeah. in the department realizes it's, it's, not it's a total package. Else. Right. Right. That yeah. it's a total package. You yeah. can go somewhere else and make, let's say, 18 or $20 an hour to start, but you have no benefits. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to fall back on, so to speak. Yeah, talk to anyone that works in an insurance company or a hospital. They don't have the benefits that the town employees have. No, we, they, tr they truly do appreciate it. Yeah. They understand it. And the other thing I want to mention, when we do have our round table, we remember that the taxpayers already voted on how the trash is to be picked up. Absolutely. We, we have to respect the voters at the round table. But there's nothing to say that you can't make adjustments, right? Yeah, you can put another Warren article next year and see how they feel about it. We need it. to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, well, huh? you all just keep the voters to be part of it. They've already spoken. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Okay.